what questions would you like me to go over? And and don't just pick ones that you got right. If you didn't know you got them right, I'll, I'll do whatever you guys want. So start wherever you guys want. Okay. Okay. So number one. Okay. If they ever ask me to talk about slope. If they ever ask me to talk about slope, there are two ways that I can talk about slope fairly easily. The first is what we call slope intercept form versus, I think now they call it slope point form. Both begin with which word? That means if you set your equation up in that form, you'll be able to just glance at it and see the slope. The first one says slope intercept. The other number tells you the y intercept. The second one says slope point. Both the numbers in the brackets backwards tell you the point. Okay? So, first thing I ask for slope intercept form, it's get the y by itself. Look at the equation that they gave me. Is the y by itself? then ding, 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 it's in slope-intercept form, okay? So then the next thing I have to memorize, and this part I have to memorize, although if you do the homework, you'll kind of practice it. Where does the slope appear in slope-intercept form? The pattern or the template we give you is this. You've seen that before, right? What was the number sitting where M is? What did that tell you? And what did the number sitting where B is? What did that tell you? This number here was the slope. This number here was the y-intercept. By the way, you can write this down, or I can print this up for you afterwards if you want. I can print up an extra copy, and your friends can give it to you, or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Or you can grab it till morning or whatever. Because um, that way I can go faster. So, what's the slope of this line? It's the number in front of the x sitting there. Negative one. Negative one. The slope <laughs> is negative one. So, is the slope of this line negative five? We would say false. By the way, what is that negative five? Where is it sitting? It's the y-intercept. So if they had said the y-intercept of this line is negative 5. True. True. Okay. Now let's kick it up a notch. I'm going to do a very, very similar question. Uh, sorry. Stop automatically creating numbered lists. Got to tweak my software because I still... Anyways, the slope of 3x minus 2y plus 5 equals 0 is how the heck can I do this? Now, there is a shortcut if you really want to get advanced. Where it involves memorizing something, and I hate memorizing something where you can glance at this and figure out the slope. Otherwise, the easiest way is to rewrite this in slope-intercept form. Mr. Duick, you said rewrite this in slope-intercept form. That's what slope-intercept form means. Get the y by itself. How do we do that? First thing I always do is rewrite the equation. Uh, let's not use red. Is that a y? Be obvious. Is that a y? Is that a y? Is that a y? It's not. Is that a y? That's what I'm staring at. Is that a Y? Is that a Y? I'm going to move everything to the other side, either by adding and subtracting, if there's a plus or minus sign in front of it, or by multiplying and dividing, if it's timesing the Y. So you ready? 
I usually do numbers, then X's, then what's in front. In fact, what I do is reverse bed mass because you're actually solving an equation. And when you're solving an equation, you're going backwards to find where you started from. And you actually end up doing, I don't know if you ever noticed in your equation solving, you do your adding and subtracting first, and then you do your multiplying and dividing at the very, very end. Mm -hmm. Exactly the opposite of bed mass, which works. So you ready? I want to move this to this side. What number is that? What's in front of it? What's the opposite of plusing five? Tricks of the trade, I always keep my equal signs in line. It helps me avoid making mistakes. In fact, I have a habit. I draw the line, I drop the equal sign down. You've seen me use this trick this year. You saw it last year. You've seen it this year. The reason I did that is on the next line, now it's no longer blank. I'm more relaxed. I've already written something down. Go figure. Trust me. It works. Oh, I've written something down. I'm good to go. So that's a little trick of the trade. Here, right? Plus 5, minus 5, nothing. 0, take away 5. The rest drops down like a domino. I have an answer. Can you just make it easier by just going plus 2? Ah. So you picked up on that trick. See, I don't know where you guys are. Yes. I would actually be easier to plus the 2i over. It is. That's how I would do it. I wasn't sure if I'd lose you that way or not. Why? It also gets rid of negatives, but you still haven't got the y by itself. What's in front of there? What's the 2 doing to the y mathematically? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? So how will I move it over? What's the opposite? Of, yep. It's going to be this. Divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. I'm going to drop my equal sign down because I feel better. And I have this, 3 over 2x plus 5 over 2. Now, I know I could change this to a decimal. Slopes we like as fractions. Why? Cam, read that to me. It tells me to count 3 up over 2. I, the fractions are much nicer. If it had said 1.78, what the heck do I count? The, I don't know, but if it's a fraction, I know exactly what to count. So, true or false? The slope of this equation is 2 thirds. What is the slope of this equation? 3 over 2. Here's your slope intercept form. You with me or did I lose you? Okay. Our by the way, the abbreviation for slope is letter M. Why M? Because not all math was done by English speaking people. I believe it's from a French word for mountain, slope. So traditionally, it's been a couple hundred years, we use letter M for slope. M is 3 over 2. So yeah, if you're good with that, this would have got us there too. Would have been a little longer. Okay? So far, so good. Now, okay. What if they asked me to graph? That. Well, you could try writing it in slope-intercept form. It's y equals 3 over 2x which is great. What's the slope? What's the y-intercept? A yucky decimal. A yucky decimal. So to graph this would be tricky because you'd be eyeballing it. And this is where slope point form is better because slope point form says, look, you got a yucky y-intercept, no problem. Don't sweat it. All you need is one point anywhere on the graph. One point anywhere on the graph. How do I do that one? Well, if I was trying to rewrite this nicer, 
but I have it right there already. Yeah. If they gave me this, times by two, times by two, times by two. But since they gave me this, I'm going to drop it down. Okay. We're trying to write this in slope point form. Now, what does slope point form look like? Well, Yep. Okay. Well, that part's going to be the same as slope intercept form. The question is what point does this go through? Hmm, I think I've made up a yucky one. Let me ponder for a second here. I'm going to do the old pause the video while I think out loud. Yeah. But I made up a... So let's move on. Let's go to number, you said start at the beginning. What's the next question on the review we want to talk about? Number two? Okay. So, yours is different? I don't think it's different. No, your number two is my number two, is it not? It's formatted differently, but the questions are identical, I think, yeah? The line, the dots. The dots are in different locations? Yeah. Are they? Okay, let's go pause for a second. So how would you do that? Here's the key. Glance at the equation. Is the y by itself say no? So, because there's a minus two. Is that in point slope form? Yep. In fact, first of all, let me do this. Uh, shrink, shrink, shrink. Copy. How do I know it's in point slope form? And this is part of the two templates you're going to have to memorize. Point slope form looks like y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1. What I really notice, what really twigs me, is the brackets around the x. That's my ding, 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 go see if it works. Then I look, is there a number in front of the bracket? Now, if there's no number, there's an invisible one, so there is still a number. And then I go trundling off and see, is there a lovely number next to the y? Okay. Okay. That's point, or sorry, slope point form. I say it backwards every time because that's how I was taught. But slope point form. So let's look over here. Cam, look at what you wrote for your template. Does this match that? I think it does. It's y plus or minus something, a number, a bracket, x plus or minus something. Now remember, brackets backward. These are both going to be backwards. So the point that it goes through, start with the x, even though they write the y first. What point is it going to go through? Not negative 5, but 5. This is going to go through the point, comma. Now go look at the y, remembering that that's also backwards. So a minus 2 next to the y is actually going to go through positive 2. So the first thing I check is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2. It does go through there. You know what? I know why I had my question the way it was. Because first you had to find a point, and then you had to graph it. So let's graph it. You okay with what we did so far, Cam? Kind of, yeah. Okay. Supposing it had said this. This is going to go through. See where I got those numbers from? 
So I went to the x first, because we always write x first. What is in brackets next to the x? One. Plus 1. Everything's backwards. That's going to be a minus 1x coordinate. What's next to the y? That's going to be a minus 4y coordinate. It's going to go through negative 1, negative 4. And then that would be the slope. We're going to graph this in a second on here. Or if I gave you y plus 2 equals bracket, actually let's not even do a bracket, x, well heck, let's do a bracket, x minus 2. This is going to go through, first of all, is the y by itself? No, but is that po slope point form? Yeah, I got the bracket. What number is in front of the bracket, by the way? It's invisible. Okay, I'll j I'm not going to write it. Can you imagine it there? What is this going to go through? Look at the x. It's going to go through two, two. brackets backwards, and the y is also backwards. Negative. Yeah. This is going to go through and I'm going to change colors just so I can be consistent. This is going to go through 5, comma, 2. I'm going to graph these, not just say what do they go through. There's the point. What's the slope? There's the slope. From this point, count up what over what? Up 1 over 2. Up 1 over 2. Up. Oh, I ran out of room. I can go backwards, though. Down one, back two, down one, back two. That's the same as going up one over two, up one over two, up one over two. In green, yeah, tongue helps. That's what that line looks like. In blue, okay. What does this go through? Negative one, negative one, two, three, four. What's its slope, Cam? Which means count how. I'll give you a hint. Over 3. Down 1. Down 1. Over 3. Down 1. Over 3. Down 1. Over 3. And now I can go back in the other direction as long as I'm careful. This blue line. Is that guy. What about the red line? It goes through 2, comma, negative 2. 2 over, negative 2 down. It goes through there. What's its slope? What's the number in front of the bracket? One that means up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. It's going to go like that. That's what you can do with slope, with point, yeah, with slope point form. Slope-intercept form is kind of cleaner. Really, all, by the way, all slope-intercept form is saying is, well, I'll come back to that. Number three. Okay. Number three is tough. Number three is tough. But what did they give you? What's the first number that they gave me, that two-thirds? What is it? What else did they tell me? Goes through a point. Which point? Six. Comma. I usually use a capital P for point. I mean, you use other stuff, but let's be clever and, okay. Goes through six, comma, zero. I can plug this into slope point form. And that's the y-intercept, the six and zero, or not? Is it? Let's find out. Well, let's see. 6 over 0 up would be 6 over 0 would be here. Is that a y-intercept? But Is that a y-intercept? Okay. Is that a y? It's an x-intercept. So patience, young grasshopper, patience. Okay. What is slope point form? It's this. Oh, you're already plugging stuff in, but I'll just refresh the template because this is what you got to have in your brain. 
what can I plug in based on what they gave me? What did you say the slope was? What's in the brackets for you to get a positive 6? And then you said y minus 0, although will a minus 0 change anything at all? So I'll write it, and then I'm just going to go like that to say we're not going to bother again. So there's the equation. Now, what this question wants to know is which of these must also be on this line? There's two ways to do this. Method one is just to graph this. What's the slope? Two thirds. What's the point? Six comma zero. So if you had some graph paper, and on the provincial you will, but probably not on your test. Although you might have, an, you know what? You could even scroll back to an earlier question and just use that graph paper really lightly with pencil. What did we say it was? Six comma zero. So we could go one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we could say uh, slope. You're lucky if it was class time, you'd owe us Timbits. Up to over three. When did it go off? Do I owe you guys 10 bits? Oh, no, that wasn't that. That I can't control. Sorry. So one way would be to do that and then just see, see those black dots that I drew. Right? Would be, uh, hey, which of those is one of those? Although that might not fit on your graph. Maybe these are too big. Okay, but it's one method. It's a long method, but it works. Dope, didn't want to do that. Get rid of this one. Ike, go bike. Being a little stubborn. Got it. So we're going to take out the blue line. Better method. What do I mean by that? So our equation right now looks like this. I'm not going to write the zero this time. What you can do is see which of these points works. What's the first point? What's point A? So I'm going to try. Here's what that means. Wherever there's an x, replace every x with a. Wherever there's a y, replace every y with a. And then see if you actually get a true statement. I'd get this there. And then I'm asking, does that equal, I'll put an equal with a question sign above it, 2 over 3, what did I say x was? Negative 3, take away 6. Does that work? Let's find out. Now, this looks very intimidating. It's not. You can actually do this all with mental math. Bed mass, what am I going to start with? Negative 3, take away 6. <coughs> Negative 9. Okay. What do I do with that fraction there, Mr. Duick? All this means is times 2 divide by 3. So negative 9 times 2 ne divide by 3. Ah, you know what? Here, I end up with a true statement. I end up with, so right now, I'm leaning towards A. In fact, it is A. But let's suppose we missed that. Let's try the next one. Let's show you one that doesn't work. So B says, try 3 comma 8. I should put brackets so you can tell these are points. So wherever I see an X, replace it with a. Wherever I see a Y, replace it with a, and then ask, does that actually work? Does the left side equal the right side, or do I get 5 equals 9? Well, then that's not true. Okay? And again, I'm going back to this equation here. What do you say I replace Y with? 3. Careful. Oh, 8. Mm -hmm. That's an easy mistake to make. That's the tricky part. The 2 thirds drops down. Oh, I'm not going to write X. What do you say I'm going to replace X with? 3. 3. 
minus 6. Okay, bad mass. 3, take away 6. Negative 3. Negative 3. What do I do? This is times 2 divided by 3. Really don't overcomplicate it. That's all that fraction means. So negative 3 times 2. Negative 6 divided by 3. I get... 8 equals negative 2. I should have put a question mark there. Does 8 equal negative 2? Can't be true. Let's try C. Yeah, so the answer is A, but I'll let's do one more that, that doesn't work, just to show you the method. Yeah. Uh, I can replace, so this is going to be 4 comma negative 3. It means replace every X with a 4, every Y with a negative 3. So it's going to be negative 3, because that's the y value, equals 2 over 3, 4 minus 6. Do the bad mass. What does 4 take away 6? Negative 2 times 2 divided by 3. Times 2 is? Divide by 3. Fraction is the left side of fraction. And in fact, on a lot of these, I don't even bother finishing them partway there. I'm not saying it'll work out. It's not that. That's really what you're saying. Anytime they give you a point in an equation, if that point is on the equation, it should work in the equation. If that point is on the line, you should be able to plug it into the line and get a true statement where the left side of your equal sign equals the right side of your equal sign. That also, if you're clever, lets you generate points in a hurry. Watch. Okay. This lets us generate points in a hurry. For example, If you gave me this equation here and you said graph it, I know that works. Now, how did I do it that fast? Put a 4 in for the x. What is 3 times 4? And I want this whole thing to work out to 12. So what did this better work out to? What if you put a 0 in for x? What does y have to be for that to work? Really? 4 times 12 is 48. What is this whole thing has to be 12. So what does y have to be with that there for that? Ah. I can get lots of very quick points that way. That, that's where graphing comes in really handy, especially if you're good at mental math. So a lot of the tricks and things that we show you, if you're good, you don't really use them that much. I often almost always just graph stuff in my head. Give me two points, and as long as my math is right, I'll connect the dots. It's a line. That's the best way to graph, not the easiest, because you got to be a good at mental arithmetic. But it's really, really handy. Anyways, keep going. Okay, let's do number four. General form. Okay. You can cross out some wrong answers right away in number four. Which wrong answer can you cross out right now already before doing anything? Why? General form is defined as no fractions. Okay. The rest, we're going to have to do some math. You know what I'm going to do first? Rewrite it. And this is where a suggestion you made about 20 minutes ago does work. We want to clear fractions. Why? Because general form says no fractions. How do we clear fractions? This is where we multiply by a common denominator. What's my common denominator going to be here? 5. What if, don't write this down, what if instead, what my common denominator be? What if what would my common denominator be? You know what? Whatever 5 times 3 times 7 is will work. It might not be the smallest common denominator. 
I'm, I, I'm really lazy. I just want any old common denominator because it'll still work. Okay. Let's go back to the way it was, which was this. Yeah, nothing there. So, times by five, times by five, times by five. By the way, here's a bad habit. I see some teachers and some kids, they teach the, t uh, they write the five there. What does that look like now? Okay. An exponent, and you'll come back and you'll forget. So if I'm clearing, I always multiply in the front. Mr. Duick, the six didn't have a fraction. Yeah, but your equation solving rules say you have to do the same thing to everything. So I multiplied everything. Now, why is that so nice? This is really 5 divided by 5, which is 1. In fact, this is just a this is 5 divided by 5. The minus sign drops down. 5, 6. 30. 30. This is slope-intercept form. General form just says make it equal. By, oh, by the way, I probably crossed that guy out now because I have a 30, not a 6. General form just says make it equal to 0. And you're right. The easiest way would be to move the y over. How would I move the y over? Minus y. Minus y. Okay, so you guys have, are ahead on the equation solving better than I have thought. That's good. The x drops down, because we usually write the x first. Uh, which one, c or d? Okay. Is that OK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How would you answer number five? First of all, I should, full disclosure, tell you, I hate these questions. In fact, I was on the provincial exam committee for a couple of years, and I got most of these tossed whenever I could. Because to me, this is making you do three questions. And also, having the whole one only, two only, this is just needlessly confusing. Because now you have to look at three questions and four answers to do one question. That's stupid. However. I'm not on the exam committee anymore. I haven't been on the new curriculum, so they're back. So, full disclosure, I hate these questions. They're stupid. Poorly written. But we're stuck with it. What does this question want me to find? Griffin, read it to me, please. Which? Which of the following lines have a negative slope? Okay. I'm going to start with number three. And the reason I start with number three, the third line, is it's in a nice form. Look at it. You see brackets? Well, twig me, by the way. Brackets? Yes? Ah, it is. It matches that. It goes through 5, comma, negative 2. Brackets backwards do the x first, and then the y is also backwards. It goes through 5, comma, negative 2. They didn't ask that. What's its slope? Anytime they give me these chart questions where there's multiple questions in the question, I always use checks and x's. I've been trying to teach you guys that in science. They love it on the provincial. I do that. Now, let's look at the first one. Is that in slope-intercept form or point slope? Well, get the y by itself. So this is the same as Is that a negative slope? Yeah. No. Oh, now, you ready? I'm glad you, I, I, I paused on purpose because I figured one of you guys, this is mean. Remember the slope-intercept form, y equals something, x plus something. What do we say? y equals, right? Where does the slope appear? In front of which variable? In front of which variable? x. Is there an x in this qu question on the right-hand side? So the, what this really is, is this. No x's minus. That's really what it is. I told you, I always try and see the whole template whenever I glance at an equation. That's what it really is. Now, do we ever write 0x? No! But it's there. The slope of this is 0. By the way, what is the slope of 0? What does that look like? Flat line. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay. Goes with a y-intercept of negative 3. This 
is that line there, three down, horizontal. I would do that. How can I figure out the slope of the second line? Same dealio, get the y by itself. How would I get the y by itself? Okay, I get this. The minus 2x and then the plus 6 drops down like a domino. Ah, what's the slope of that line? Did you say negative? Now I zoom out. What's the correct answer? A, B, C, or D? Having said that, I hate these questions. Three questions in one, that's stupid. It dramatically increases the risk of making a mistake, especially that negative three. And they did that on purpose. I know they made sure that when you got the Y by itself, you'd have a negative number screaming out at you. It was a cheap move, but I know that, because we stole these from a sample provincial exam. Let's keep going. I hate these questions. This is, again, four questions in a row. You know what, though? So, so my frustrated compromise, I use my check mark and X's next to each line. I never try and answer these all at once. You can't. All right. What's the first thing say? Part one, what's the condition? The? Y-intercept. I have no idea what the Y. Oh, how do I find the Y-intercept? You know what? I think I'm going to take the equation that they gave me and get the y by itself. Rewrite it in slope intercept form. How am I going to do that? I'm going to start up by writing out the equation. Now what? I'm going to go with his minus 2x from both sides. You could minus the 3y, but you still have a 6 over there. So. I'll drop the 3y down. You said minus 2x, and then the 6 drops down, and I better put a plus sign in front of it now. Now what? Oh, what is 6 over 3? Yeah, really this is. All right, let's answer the questions. Here we go. Is the y-intercept negative 2? Positive 2. It's telling me I need to get home, but I'm good for a while. Is the line parallel now? When we talk about parallel, what we really mean is... Oh, shoot, I should have done that. Sorry, 1 is wrong. Cross out B and C already, yes. That was sloppy of me. I've taught you to do that, too. Because now, even like if you ran out of time, you've turned it from a 1 in 4 guessing to a true-false question. You've got a 50-50 chance of guessing right, right? OK. Yes. In fact, you know what? Does 2 appear in any of the remaining answers? You could skip 2, couldn't you? But we'll do it because it's a concept. Parallel means same slope. What's the slope of this line here? What's the slope of this line here? Because the y is by itself. Is 2 over 1 the same as negative 2 over 3? I would say to you, net, no. Didn't help me at all, but OK. Uh, is the slope-intercept form of this line? And now, if I was on the provincial, I would quit, because it can't be that. So the answer is A. What do they mean by range? What two things go together? What and range? We always talk about them. We say, what's the, what's the range? First one begins with a D. Domain or range, OK? Domain is how far left, right. Range is how high up, down. Every single line will have a domain and a range of all reals if it's in any way slanted. Because if it's slanted at all, I'm telling you, it's going to go to negative infinity, positive infinity, up and down, up and down. 
So as soon as I saw that there was a slant, see the slope, negative two-thirds, there is a slope, I said, oh, you know what? The range and the domain are both all real numbers. Which lines don't slant? Slope of zero has a domain of all reals, but the range is just going to be whatever height it is. And you were right. Vertical lines have a range of all reals, but domain is just whatever x coordinate they go through. We've jogged our memory, I think now, ask me what you guys are struggling with, because we're not going to get through this for a while here anyways. So questions from the review that you were going, I have no idea how the heck to do, or questions from your homework or topics. Do you have this unit 5 review, or should I just show it? Do I have the unit 5 review? This one here? Does it look like that? That's it? Which one? Yep. Yeah. What number? Try me. I think fifteen. Fifteen. Oh no, 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 fifteen. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Determine the X or Y intercept? Is that what you got? Or is your 17 different? Okay, what does your 17 say? Read it to me. Write the equation of a line in a slow point form that passes through the given point and is parallel to the given line. So my 19 is your 17, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Pretty easy to fix, turns out. Yeah. We're doing the review. I'm just yep. confused on one part. Yep. Did the, so, whenever I find equations of lines, I always ask myself two questions. If I don't, that's what I'm going to be looking for first from whatever information they gave me somehow. If I don't, that's what I'm going to be looking for next. After that, I can plug it into slope point form. Heck, and then if they want slope intercept, I can get the y bracket, clear brackets, and all that crap. So. What's the first question I ask myself? So here's what they've told me. They've told me that it is parallel to this. What can you tell me about parallel lines? Okay. So this is going to have... So I'm going to find the slope of that. How? I would get the y by itself. <gasps> Wait a minute. It already is. What's the slope of the line that they gave me? Yes, over 1, but I'm lazy. Do I know the slope? I do now. Check. In fact, <coughs> do I have a point? Oh, they gave me a point. Now. Here's the sloppy mistake. And they'll have this answer to pick from. Why is that wrong? Uh, the x doesn't, this is the x value. Put it next to the x. This is the y value. In fact, you, you may notice actually what I do is I write y, I leave a space, and then I fill in the x and come back and do the y just so I don't do that mistake. 
That's the answer. That's the equation in slope point form that passes through 1 comma 3 and has a slope parallel to what they gave me. What if instead of parallel, what if they had said perpendicular? Okay. Yeah, you do. You just don't realize. Oh, I should write here. Do I have a point? My life has no point. Yeah, shut up. I have, a I have an answer. Um, so is that the answer? I, that I don't know. But says to me, write the equation of a line in what? What form? Slope. That is in slope point form. That is the so answer. I'm just wondering, what's with that negative 5? That's just there. That is a totally different line, but that line has the same slope. You know what? Let me graph both of these so you can see them side by side. Here's what they've done. So the one they gave you, I think it's what it was, right? Yeah. Okay. The one that we just found is minus 3 equals 2. We found the equation of the line that goes through 1 comma 3, 1 over 3 up, and is parallel to this line. I didn't need that negative 5. What I needed was how slanty the slope of this line to get the slope of that line. I did the job. Now, if they had said with this, well, Let's do some yuckier, nastier ones. So, so these are the ones you're having trouble with. Um, this one here, B, is going to be y yuckier. Okay? Well, what I'm going to do is change the numbers. So you ready? It's going to go through negative 3, negative 5, and I'm going to make this x equals 2 thirds y minus 2. I still ask myself two questions. Do I have a slope? And do I have a point? I got a point, negative 3 comma negative 5. That's going to be the easy part. Do I have a slope? No. If I had the y by itself, I'd have a slope. Do I have the y by itself? So you know what I'm going to have to do? Get the y by itself. So I ask, do I have the slope? Not yet. How am I going to get the y by itself? What's the first thing I've done pretty much every time? You're way overcomplicating it. I rewrite the equation they gave me. I write something down. I'm more relaxed. It's no longer blank. If you ever have me for physics 11 and 12, the only thing that'll really annoy me is if you leave a question totally blank. Really? You couldn't bother writing down the correct formula? Really? You couldn't list what they gave you? That's quitting. That's quitting. So here's what they gave me. How will I find the slope? I'm going to get what by itself? Because I asked you to. I'm going to get what by itself? Why? Because I asked you to. I'm going to get what by... I'll never get tired of that joke ever! Sorry. <laughs> he just figured it out now. It's a little sad. Okay. How will I get the y by itself? I got something to take it over for a minute. Okay. How will I get the y by itself? So, sure, that's plus 2. I'm in. So we're doing finding equations, okay? Yeah. It's write the equation of the line in slope point form that passes through the point and is parallel to the given line. And what I did is I took B and I just changed the numbers so that I'm not doing your homework for you because you were going to say, I'll try it myself. Try it yourself after this. What am I trying to get by itself? Because wow. I how? What's the 2 doing to the y? So how will I move it over? Later. What's the 3 doing to the y? Dividing. 
How will I move it over? It's dividing it, basically. The three? Is it on the bottom? Yeah. It's what it, that's what you guys way overcomplicate fractions. All that means is that's exactly the same as saying uh, divide by three somewhere along the way. And yeah, we can call it thirds. You can call it whatever you want. It's divide by three somewhere along the way. So how will I get rid of a divide by three? which you called multiplying by a common denominator. That's why it works. It's the same shtick. It's going to be times by 3, times by 3, times by 3. Those ones will cancel. I'll get 3x plus 6 equals... Oh, no, what else is in front of the y? Thank you. And I get you with me so far, Alex. Yeah. I said, if this, since you just came in, whenever they want me to find the equation of a line, I ask myself two questions. Adrian, read me the first question. Yeah, I know the if I don't, if the answer is no, I'm not doing anything else. My goal is to find the slope from the information they gave me. Once I've done that, what's the second question I ask? And I wondered that about you many times. No, I mean, I mean, uh, it, mathematically, mathematically, right? Yeah, I set him up for that one like ten minutes ago. I know. Okay. So, they gave me. Here's what they said. Then, they gave. Here's the point that I made up to change the question: negative three comma negative five. And here's the equation: x equals two thirds y minus two. I said, okay, how can I find the slope? If they give me an equation, I can find its slope by getting the y by itself. So that's what we did. So, you ready? I ask myself two questions. Do you remember what was the first question? Do I know the? Do I know that what's the slope of that line in black that I just wrote at the bottom of the page? The second question was, have I got a point? I've wondered that about you many a time. No, I do have a point. The point is negative 3 comma negative 5. If I can get to here, now it's plug and chuck as long as I know the template, the point slope form template, which goes right? I change the question, yeah. right? If I know the template, and you do have to memorize, ah, no, wait a minute, I think they give this to you on the provincial exam formula sheet. Are you guys getting a yeah. formula sheet at all? Okay, I have it here because I get sick of l looking it up. On the provincial you do, you get it on the board? Okay. Well, she, she, she put, she's going to put it, like, right. on the test? Okay. So you don't have to have that specifically memorized. You have to know what everything means. That makes sense. So I'm going to see if Adrian walks into the sloppy point mistake that I did on purpose on the previous question, okay? And not to make fun of you, but if you'll do it, you'll go, oh, I'll never do that on the test. What's going to go after the Y? So here's my point. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, plus. Okay. Ah, good. You caught it. You went... Wait a minute, no, the Y, even though I write the X first in the bracket, it, it, the Y shows up first. Thank you. Plus 5 equals M plus 3. That's the equation of the line that goes through negative 3 comma negative 5 and is parallel to that monstrosity. Parallel means same slope. What if they had done the same question, but perpendicular? Because you guys said, I don't know what that means. I would start out all the same. I would ask myself two questions. If I did not, all of my efforts are find the slope, and my second question is, Adrian? Do I know the point? And do I have a point? Yeah, do I know the point? Okay. <laughs> now, the only difference here is once I have the slope, which we said was 3 over 2, perpendicular will be negative 2 over 3. 
the fancy phrase, the two-word phrase, negative reciprocal is what we say. Perpendicular slopes have negative reciprocals. Negative means change the sign. If it's positive, make it negative. If it was already negative, make it positive. Reciprocal means flip it. Same point. So you want the line that goes through negative 3 comma 5, negative 5, but it's perpendicular. I'll prove it to you. Let's graph it. First one was y plus 5 equals 3 over 2 x plus 3. y plus 5, equal, uh, 5 equals 3 over 2 bracket x plus 3. And I said the second one was y plus 5 equals negative 2 over 3 bracket x plus 3. Ready? Let's zoom in. Are those perpendicular to each other? And yet, lo and behold, not only do they both go through negative 3 comma negative 5, that happens to be where they cross. Ta-da! Okay? All we can do is make things yuckier. It's going to be the same idea, though. Which two questions am I going to ask? Do I know the first, first things first? Slope first, then do I have a point? So let's look at some more. So uh, Alex, here's a, for you, I think this is going to be number 18. But you have a perpendicular on number 18 on your review, is that right? <coughs> I betcha. Yeah. Okay. Hey, let's make it even tougher. Oh, they don't go any tougher than that, but they might in the study guide. Let me see how tough we can make this. Blah, 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 blah. So let's, we're going to go power a little bit here. I can make this a bit bigger, Mr. Duke. Page one. How would I find the slope of this line here? Get y by, Get y by itself. Okay. Not even over. And you guys are okay with that? Yeah? So it's mostly like, if you see like, Something if they start talking about back. slope and the y isn't by itself, get the y by itself. Yeah. Unless it's in slope point form. So the exception would be... Uh, there was one here, wasn't there? This, although the y isn't by itself, the brackets twig me with the number in front. This is slope point form. Seven is about as tough as we can throw at you. So I'm going to take number seven, but I'm going to change the numbers. So I'm not going to bother copying everything. Goes through the point negative 2 comma 5 and is parallel to the line segment that joins a negative 5 comma 6 and b 3 comma negative 2 oh heck perpendicular What do they want me to find? An equation. In what form? Slope so I'm going to get it in point slope form, and then holy smokes, I'm going to have to get the y by itself after all is said and done. This is about as much as we can throw at you. So wait, slope intercept is y, y equals mx seven. plus b. Um, slope point form. y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1, where, y1, where x1 comma y1 is the point. Make sure you don't get it mixed up in the wrong place. So Okay, so slope point is that, yeah. and then you said something about point slope. Slope point. I was oh. taught point slope, and so I keep okay, flipping so the... they're the same thing. They're the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay? They want me to find an equation? I ask myself two questions. What's the first question? Cool. Did they tell me the slope? Not yet. What word is that? It's going to be perpendicular to that slope. 
Now, how the heck can I find the slope between two points? Adrian, my man. I'm going to give you, you don't have to follow this, but I've done, taught this so often. I'm always big about maximum bang for minimum buck. You had me last year. The least amount of work for the getting rid of the most mistakes. And one of the things I do whenever I'm using the slope equation is I go like this underneath it. X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Because the only mistake I see with the slope formula is kids put both of these on the top and both of these on the bottom. And you're going to see your peers do it all the time. How can I prevent that? Oh, maybe if I have them label them, it takes one second. Because if you label them, now it's, here's my physics phrase, plug and chug. What's the slope? What's y2? Minus what's y1? Over what's x2? Minus what's x1? Holy smokes, this is a fluke. This is going to work out evenly. I almost want to change the numbers and make it yuckier. Uh, negative 8 over 8. That's why, I, <laughs> what are the odds? I just made them up. Uh, what is negative 8 over 8 in lowest terms? Okay. Now, if they had said parallel, that's my slope. I asked myself two questions. Do I know the slope? Now, they didn't say parallel. What did they say? What were the underlying? Okay, so my slope negative reciprocal. What's the negative of negative 1? And what's the reciprocal of 1 over 1? That's why I almost wanted to change this, because it's fluking out into a nicer question. My slope is 1. <sighs> Do I have a point? Yeah? What? Yeah. Oh, the point. Yeah. Negative two. Okay. And now I'm back to where I was. Then, then I could go. So here's my point. Y minus Y one equals M bracket X minus X one. Y minus five. One bracket x plus 2. Did I get that right? I always have to be careful because this is where I make mistakes a lot too. It is tricky, but I think I filled it in right, right? Except... That's my point, right? Ah, that's x1 and y1 for the slope formula, but that's not what my equation goes through. My equation goes through this point here. Sorry, I didn't know what you guys were asking. This is what I use to find the slope. That's a completely separate line and equation. All I know is apparently that line, whatever the heck it is, has the slope hidden in it that I can use in my equation. But I'm going to use my point, the point that my line passes through. Okay. And I'm going to make that 5 a little bit less distorted. But shouldn't the 2 be negative? What's that right there? Negative What's a minus minus? Ooh, okay. Right? Yeah. I, this is, I, don't kid yourself. The oh, reason yeah. you're finding this tough, it's not as much difficult as, holy smokes, is there a lot of steps, and boy, can I make mistakes along the way. Because, by the way, in terms of actual arithmetic, the most you're doing is solving some equations, math 8 and counting rise over run for Pete's sakes, you're counting dots. But knowing what to do when, that's the tricky part here. Uh, we're not quite done. This is uh, slope point form, I have to think every time. What do they want? Which means get the y by itself. How? First thing I would do is I would get rid of the brackets because there's no brackets in slope intercept form. Now there's a one there. Is that going to change anything? No, but if there's a two there, I would like, to, first of all, if there was a fraction, I'd clear the fraction. Multiply by a common denominator. Okay? Then 
I multiply the top number into the bracket. This is why I said I really should have changed the numbers. That one that worked out was a nice fluke. No, it, it made the question easier than I want. I wanted it to be really, really yucky. But okay, we get what does slope intercept form want you to do? Okay, how? That's the equation of the line that goes through, I guarantee you, negative 2 comma 5. Trust me, it does. How do I know? I forced it to right there. And it's going to be perpendicular. If we were to connect those two on a graph, we would find that it crossed the line connecting those two at a 90 degree angle. I'm not going to bother, but we could. So all perpendicular to 90 degree angles. Perpendicular means right angle. And that means their slopes are two words. <laughs> Negative reciprocals. <laughs> okay? This, I always did this with my students when I taught this. What do perpendicular slopes have? They're. <laughs> what? Because <laughs> I'm hoping the cadence there will twig them with negative reciprocal. <laughs> I'm trying to say it with my mouth closed. Okay? That's most of what we can throw at you. Let's go back to the study guide now. And I'm just looking for yuckies. By the way, so number nine, again, I hate these questions because you're doing three questions in one, but which gives the slope, the x-intercept, and the y-intercept? So write it by itself, get the y by itself, and you've got the slope and the y-intercept. How do I find an x-intercept? Put a zero in for y. In fact, you know what? I can tell you what the x-intercept is going to be if I just look. I could put a zero right there. Two times what minus four equals zero. Four minus four equals zero. X is going to be two, because that's what's going to give me a four there. And you can write it out if you need to, but I'm pretty good at my zero times table and finding intercepts in my head. Ten says find the slope. So the point blah, blah, blah lies on a line with slope blah, blah, blah. Could you write that in point-slope form? I asked myself two questions. Do I know the slope? They told me. Do I have a point? They told me I could get the equation. Then they want the x-intercept. How do I find the x-intercept? Yeah, and solve. It's going to be a little yucky. You might have to clear some fractions and suck it up, buttercup, but it, I can do it. What I'm not going to do is freeze and panic. I can do it. It's going to be yucky. Look at the next one. The equation of the line passing through the point blah, 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 with slope, blah. Oh, they want the equation? I ask myself two, I start, start a pattern. I ask myself two questions. Do I know the? They told me, negative three. Did they give me a point? Yeah. Then I can find the equation. And then, now, looking at this, it looks like they've rewritten it in general. Is it general? Is that what you guys call it? Because it used to be called standard. Anyways, they changed the names of the new curriculum, so I'm always hesitating and pausing. Uh, clear fractions, get rid of brackets, make it equal to zero. Are you guys okay with once you have the equation? You're looking a little shaky, or do you want me to do one like this? Uh, when you, once we have an equation... I'll come back to number 12. I'll see if I can find one that's tougher that needs me to do this step anyhow, but if not, I'll come back to number 12. Okay. The line passing through the point is parallel to the, the equation. Oh, they want me to find the equation of the line. I ask myself two questions. What do I ask myself? Now, they didn't tell me the slope, but what's the magic word that they used here? It's going to have the same slope as this bad boy. How can I find the slope of this bad boy? The y by itself. Do I know the slope? I will. Did they give me a point? Yep. Slope, uh, points, slope, slope point form. Thank you. Meanwhile, look behind you. There's an attention span there. Um, <laughs> you guys are okay with rise over run? Yeah. yeah. Okay. X and Y intercepts. There's the Y intercept. There's the X intercept from a graph. Or if they give you the equation to find the X intercept, Get y by put, put Y, y equals zero. zero. Yeah. To find the Y intercept, let X equal zero. Although, if you get the Y by itself, the number sitting over there it happens to be the Y intercept anyways. So if you've already done that, great. For here, for example, because I'm pretty good at doing math in my head, x-intercept is 3. 
because six take I, I'm the y is zero. Six take away six is zero. The x-intercept is three. The y-intercept again. I just imagine this whole x thing vanishing. What minus six is? You know what? The y-intercept is six. Can be done in your head. I would never do it that way on a test. I would in my homework. Give me a sec. Find the equation in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b form, has the following characteristics. I asked myself, now here I have a shortcut. They did give me the slope, and they gave me the y-intercept, which is a point. But you know what? I can plug that right into there, because the 3 is going to go there, and the negative 2 is going to go there, and I'm done. I don't need to walk through writing it in slope point form and then getting the y by itself. Okay. However, number B, they gave me the slope, they gave me a point, I would write it in slope point form, and then I would get the y by itself. Hopefully, Wait, can you go up to the B again? So if you write it in slope point form, then you put the y... It would look like this. Haven't forgotten yours. It would look like this. Okay, do you see where that all came from? I made sure I got the y in the right place because that's yeah. the most common mistake. Now they want to get the y by itself. Okay. I, w I skipped a bunch of steps, but that's what you would do, right? Did I lose you? No. P plus six, yeah. plus six. I think that's right. I hope I'm that's just right. making sure because okay. uh, when it says something like that, then... Wait, did it say at the top near A to use point my slope? Did it say? Okay. Here's what it said. Ready? Which form did they want the answer in? No. Okay. So I... All right. Okay. I point... Did it again. Slope point form, it's the easiest form to find an equation for. You give me any bit of information. In fact, if any of you take calculus, my calculus kids all love it because you can find the slope of a tangent line, you get the derivative, you got a point, it's plug and chuck. Then I can turn it into whatever the heck form you want. But that's kind of like our unifying, this is what we, we start here and then branch out. Let's keep going. Usually. Yeah, for every question. You go okay. In, in, in all honesty, it's even more general than that. So I would say if I was teaching, put your pencils down. Everything actually comes from this. Now, normally you write y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I wrote it a little bit differently. I wrote a blank y minus y1, and a blank x minus x1. I used to tell my kids the slope formula is the Swiss army knife of mathematics. Why are Swiss army knives so famous? You can use them all over the place. See, it turns out if I cross multiply right now, if I times that over there, lo and behold, slope point form, pop, it's actually out of the slope formula. When you go to calculus, you spend about a month and a half learning how to rewrite this slope formula for curves, because we haven't taught you how to find the slope of a curve. And it turns out in physics, finding slopes of anything is hugely useful, and the good stuff is curves. Lines are boring. Sir Isaac Newton invented the calculus because he asked, how the heck do I find the slope of a curve? You want to know. So here's what he said. Don't write this down. Here's your calculus for the day. Here's a curve. He said, I, if I wanted to find the slope right there, what I could do is I could pick a point to the left and a point to the right. And if I connected those, that would be pretty close to the slope right there. With me so far? 
He said, you know what? I can make it more accurate by putting these two points closer together. Ah, he said, wait, 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 wait. I can make it more accurate by putting these two points even closer together. What's the closest together I can get them? What number, how far apart would they be? And the answer, he said, is I'd like to make them zero apart. Now, here's the problem. That puts a zero down there. So what he really asked himself was, is there a way that I can divide by zero without technically dividing by zero? And thus, calculus was invented. We always tell you guys, you can't divide by zero, and you can't. But there's workarounds, if you're clever. And it turns out then to allow you to find the slope of the curve. So going to your question, Alex, the mod you can say slope point form is where it all comes. It actually all comes from the slope formula. It's a Swiss Army knife of math. Use it all over the place, and it pops up in some of the coolest. Uh, really, that's the slope formula. Yeah, it is. Hello, old friend. Okay, it's like at Disneyland, the hidden Mickey's or whatever that show up all over the place. You had a question. You had a question. Let me just keep going because I'm nearly at the end. I want to blaze through this. Find the equation in what form here? Slope. I asked myself two questions. Do I know the? Slope. Hey, they told me. Do I have a point? So that's plug and chug. Plug and chug. Plug and chug. All they can do is make it tougher to find the slope. So the slope point, oh, here we go. Slope point equation is given. State the slope and the coordinates of the point. What's the slope of this? What does it go through? More specific. What, comma, what? Four, comma, negative three. That would be a wrong answer. They would put on the multiple choice. I guarantee you four, comma, negative three is wrong. Three, negative four is also wrong. First of all, x is first. Brackets are backwards. Negative four, comma, three. And you can see as a multiple choice quest, I, I'll tell you what the answers to this would be on the provincial. Uh, positive three, comma, four. Positive three, negative four. Negative four, negative three. Negative four, three. That's what they do. And you threes and fours all over the place and you can't get, you gotta know your stuff. But if you know your stuff and you don't trip on your brain, it's easy. You gotta memorize that part. But it's really, it's almost fill in the blank. Hey, change the sign, that's your X coordinate. Change the sign, that's your Y coordinate. Converting equations means make it equal to zero. So here, I would just minus the y over. Done. Here, what will you have to do first? Multiply by six, multiply by six, multiply by six, clear the fractions, and then make it equal to zero. And usually the easiest way to do that is to minus the y over. Wait, once you multiply the one by three? You can't multiply by different numbers. What's my common denominator? Okay, so. This one says, rewrite, watch, it'll be, it'll be easier if you see it. What's on the bottom of the first fraction? Three. What's on the bottom of the second fraction? Six. The common denominator is times by six, times by six, times by six. I have to multiply everything by the same thing. Otherwise, I've broken equation solving. In equation solving, you can't multiply one thing by five and the other thing by seven. It's, you multiply everything by the same thing. You get here, it's six times two divided by three. And this is why I say to you guys, don't overcomplicate fractions. If it's on the top, all it means is times. If it's on the bottom, all it means is divide. And yeah, you can think about fractions other ways, but when you're timesing, that's six times two, which is? Three, twelve. <laughs> divided by three? Six times two, which is? Twelve. <laughs> divided by three? Four. And the x drops down like a domino. Plus, and all this is is six times one divided by six. Is that general form? No, general form is equal to what? general form. By the way, I hate general form. It's useless. I can't think of anywhere where I want to use it or why it's helpful. I don't know why they put it in the curriculum. Slope point form? Yes. Slope intercept form? Sure. This one? Ugh. Doesn't tell me any of the slope. Doesn't tell me any points. 
Yeah, it's got a zero in it. Big deal. About 10 more minutes, I think we'll be done. You guys have been patient. What do they want me to find here? Find the, okay. How do I find an equation? I ask myself two questions. Oh, how could I find the slope from uh, those two guys? Y2 minus Y1, okay. So then I'll have the slope. Then I need a point. Turns out, either of those points will work. If you use 7 comma 5 and you use 6 comma 1, you'll find when you start plugging things in and clearing brackets and making it equal to 0, you guys end up with identical equations. Which one would you use? Whichever has the easier numbers, to be honest. And if here there's not much of a difference, but there was one that had like 2s and 3s, I'd probably use that one because I'm better as opposed to 11s and 19s. Well, we're nearly done. I can print this for you. You can wait for about 60 more seconds. Okay. okay. Did I answer your question um, that I said I'd yeah, come yeah, back yeah. to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I snuck it in later. You had one, and I think I don't yeah, know. Yeah, okay. So first of all, let's go like this.